Two of the main challenges anticipated were the limited access to lab and the impact that it would have in the process of creating a new mix. And also fewer people allowed to come into campus and participate in physical activities. Thus, finalizing an enhanced focus area that was virtual was key. This brings us to our second focus area, Whatever Floats Your Boat, a concrete canoe guide. This guide is a compilation of the team's experience and knowledge containing step-by-step -step information, providing a framework for current and future concrete canoe members. The proposal of TIER paired with the TPC and the concrete canoe guide enhances the overall social sustainability of the team by providing the opportunity to maintain and add a unique value to this year's proposal and to also provide resources to keep strength the, uh, of the concrete canoe team. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, questions? Sure, I have a question. Um, so in your presentation, you show us a drawing of your canoe and in the isometric, you show that there's a hole in your canoe, yet in your report, that hole is not included. Uh, which one is the diagram we're supposed to refer to? So and which one, and, and if, if the hole is a part of your canoe, what is its purpose? Correct, so basically we put the, the canoe with the hole is last year's canoe, so you same, uh, you same boat. That canoe, we use the same concept of the hole, but we removed the hole itself. We kept everything else the same because the, the hole design of the older canoe was wider, uh, to create extra buoyancy and also deeper to increase the freeboard. But this year's canoe, since it will have a denser concrete, uh, we decided to leave those dimensions there for extra buoyancy of the uh, new mix design. Thank you. Um, in your paper and on this uh, slide here, you show precasted bulkheads. Um, why did you, why did you cast them before? Uh, for easiness of the construction process, uh, from previous years, it, it has been like the team has a hard, has had a hard time doing everything all at once, the, the bulkheads and the pour of the canoe. So last year, what was experienced was that the bulkheads were, were precasted. Uh, a week before the actual pour day and wet, wet, wet cured. So we plan on doing uh, the same with our canoe, precasted bulkheads. Uh, so it would ease the process of pour day and will make it better for everyone, including the canoe itself. So if I can ask a follow-up question, how did you manage and prevent uh, the issues that usually come up with cold joints? With the, so basically we are, we do our pour day all in one day and one batch, like not one batch, but uh, we pre-batch all the concrete. And so we're ready to go for pour day and we do all our pouring the same day uh, and all the concrete is already pre-casted. So basically cool, like we prevent cold joints from forming by placing the concrete uh, in a fast manner that it prevents, you know, cold joints from forming. Uh, about the aesthetics of your canoe, uh, if you were gonna mosaic the uh, inside of the canoe, how were you planning on doing the exterior of it? The exterior? So we're gonna do similar to last year as well with the thin finish, uh, finishing mix and we hand draw the outside 
we put a uh, tape uh, that on the shape of the letters in this case, in this case, the, the room stone, and then we put the thin layer of the finishing mix with the, with the pudding. Um, what do you call that? Scoop. Yeah, spatula. Great, so you want to go see? Um, so you just said um, that you have a finishing mix as well. Is there a reason why you chose to have two mix designs? Correct. Uh, well, as for the finishing mix, we're going to use the same ratios that we did of, uh, was it? Yeah, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's basically the same finishing mix as uh, using both but with grade zero and one half of pumice. Okay. I think maybe we have one time for one last question. <clears throat> so in your analysis, uh, you used a, a typical rectangular type section that formed a C shape. Uh, for your moment of inertia and some of your analysis, how do you think that reflects the actual cross-sectional shape and analysis of the of the canoe? I mean, even, even though it's not the actual shape of it, the, the weight of that and the buoyancy would kind of offset each other. So I, I feel like it's a pretty accurate, accurate model. Uh, also, they've done uh, strain tests in the past to test the the strain versus what was uh, calculated by that representation and it's been it's been fairly accurate okay. sorry follow up on that who is they who have conducted these strain tests i couldn't couldn't tell you the the year of that but it, it was a previous uh concrete canoe team okay thank you Shannon, I think uh, we've exhausted our questions. Yep. So uh, thank you for your time, Tyler. Thank you. Good job. Yes, thank you. Okay, so it looks like up next we have UT RGV. Um, good morning, everyone. Do you guys hear echo? Yes. Uh, can, oh, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Like, well, okay, let me share my screen. Uh, good morning. We are. Do we start? Judges, we already. Confirmed. Ready. You're good to go. Uh, hello. We are the UTHB Concrete Canoe, and this is our technical presentation. Uh, to begin with, this is our overview. We're going to be talking about the project management, whole design, the construction, sustainability, uh, and the two enhanced focus areas. Uh, to begin, we chose our theme to be the Greek God of War. I know the other one was North, but this is Greek. Um, we believe that 
uh, Aries personifies these five uh, characteristics, and we as a team wanted to exemplify and enumerate these uh, characteristics as well, such as strategy, competitiveness, triumph, fearlessness, and determination. Okay, so uh, at the start of the competition, the UTRGV team had minimum to no experience in constructing a hole, or let alone, you know, um, designing a hole. So we made it a key point to do as much research as we can. Uh, we uh, focused on learning the boat terminology, the schematics of a, of a boat, of a, of a canoe, and to eventually, you know, design the canoe. So we um, eventually, we use a program called Self-Ship, and this program allowed us to design and um, model a canoe based on resistance, power, and speed. Um, our final product, we ended up using a flat bottom to ensure stability, um, a sharp entry line um, to, uh, to increase speed, and the length, the overall length was uh, just above 20 feet, and the width was around two and a half feet. For the project and quality management, we decided to go ahead with two project managers um, in charge of the recruiting, the scheduling, the budgeting, as well as the short-term and major milestones uh, around the project. Uh, we also went ahead to uh, go with a functional and flat organizational structure, which allowed to have a more open communication between the managers and also the members. It improved the co coordination overall of the project and it allowed us to have a more uh, you know, efficient decision-making along the way. Regarding the, uh, the COVID-19 guidelines, we decided to go ahead, obviously, implementing the CDC guidelines as well as the UTRGV guidelines when we decided to meet uh, towards the end of the preliminary phase. Continuing on our construction techniques, uh, this is all theoretical since it's a two-year program, a two-year, yeah, preliminary thing. So the first one we would like to uh, uh, employ a wooden mill mold due to its sustainability, flexibility, and efficiency. We're thinking about uh, implementing two sets of 20 stations, kind of like plywoods to spaced out, out spaced on one foot by the canoe so it can uh, ensure uh, quality control or th the same thickness throughout the, the casting process. We would like to uh, use ribs and end pieces that will be structured with the number cut, hot wire cutter to exact to be so they can be exact and precise. Uh, we were thinking about using some oil-based lubricants, such as the ones listed, and the WR Meadows 1150 clear as a sealant. Okay, so for our first enhanced focus area, we chose to do research on the mixed design. So as mentioned earlier, um, the team had very little um, experience in designing a mixed design. So we thought it was very important to um, you know, um, spend that extra time in researching the different types of aggregates, their pros, their cons, um, their impact on the mix design, um, the, the ratios to see whether uh, if you increase one, you know, uh, the strength will increase or, and so on. So uh, we thought it was very important um, to dedicate as much time as we could. And um, these were the, the, the materials that, that, that we ended up using. Um, um, we chose these to uh, ensure the most you know, economical, sustainable, and eco-friendly uh, mix design to, to produce a, a lightweight concrete canoe. Uh, the second enhanced focus area we chose was a business information model, which we believed it was supposed to be like a more complete project for future generations so they can see what kind of project, what it should look like. And we, we used uh, three different softwares to uh, such as SketchUp, SolidWorks, and DevShip to, uh, to do Greek inspired columns, car game display, and of course the whole design as mentioned. Um, to end this all in all, we believe that our, our design should be standardized because it's sustainable with the materials we used. It's simple in how we, uh, the methods we're gonna use, you know, in simple and, and easy to understand, safe and secure with the methods we use. And we believe it's satisfactory with the guidelines that C4 has uh, outlined. Thank you. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Thank you. Just give us one moment.
Alrighty. So um, in your presentation, you said that you are going to design your canoe with a flat bottom. Do you have any concerns about um, mobility of the canoe? Um, okay, so based on previous um, experience, um, uh, two years ago, we had a very um, arched uh, uh, bottom, and that really took a toll on us um, in, in terms of the whole uh, performance of the canoe when you're racing. Um, we, that's why we, we went ahead and chose a flat bottom for, for this upcoming year to be constructed. That way, since we, are, uh, we do consider ourselves very beginners, so we would we wouldn't want that um, difficulty upon um, on the team for for this upcoming year. So um, that's why we chose the flat bottom. Um, yes, it would take away uh, some sort of uh, speed in, in, in racing, but we we thought that uh, at least to to do a more uh, uh, a, a more complete canoe or uh, to ensure a more um, successful canoe, uh, we would we would um, choose, uh, choose to do a flat bottom. Okay, thank you. Um, so for future teams, what would you say were the top three things that you learned that you would tell them to prevent any of the issues you had in your canoe design? Sir, can you repeat the question? So basically, what were the top three things that you learned from this year's competition that you would pass on to the next year's team? Did you hear me that time? Um, well, I mean, I could summarize it maybe into probably like two things. Well, the first one would be how to do a mix design, since it's something that's so pivotal. And, you know, it's always basically... You know, most most of the the canoe, the hunker canoe is is doing a mix, and as well maybe teamwork. You know, not doing everything yourself. You know, actually like uh, uh, delegating tasks more efficiently, and uh, maybe the thing also for the the mold. You know, most we've had difficulty with our molds in the past years. That I think doing one good mold that can be reusable should be would be like very helpful for like throughout the years. Uh, follow up on your answer. How do you, how would you reuse the mold every year once you take the canoe off? Yes. So um, your question was, um, um, how would we uh, do a mold that would be uh, be able? that our team would be able to use for future for the future. Um, right. Okay. So um so uh for we considered that and we wanted that's why we wanted to do a, a wooden mail mold. Um so that way we can reuse it for um future uh, for future generations. Um we do realize that um if, if, and again for for the past like two years <laughs> each time we would do a mold um uh, we would um uh, it was basically another added step uh, in, in the whole process. And it, it took away a lot of time because the majority of the time we were just doing a mold. Um, and that's what we found ourselves um, um, lacking on or slacking on. So that's why uh, we proposed to do a wooden mold. Um, that way we would be able to use not only this year, but for a, for a future generation. Okay, thank you. Uh, so you are using recycled fine aggregate in your concrete mixture. Typically, recycled fine aggregate has a lot of issues when you're trying to find the uh, moisture, the absorption capacity of your fine aggregate. How do you see this as a problem? And how what kind of solutions do you have to avoid any issues with your absorption of your fine aggregate? Um, if I understood, so the question was to like, why would, how would uh, recycled concrete aggregate, like what would be the choice, like the effects or choices of it? Uh, so, so you're going to have problems with finding the absorption 
capacity of your fine aggregate. There's a lot of uh, variation that you'll see between different recycled material. So how do you plan on addressing that in your mix design? Um, I don't think I'm qualified right now. I need to answer that question. I don't know if you would like allow me to get back to you on that, but I wouldn't be able to answer that right now. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, uh, so keeping on with the theme with sustainability, um, how does using an oil-based lube affect your sustainability model? Um, hello, Judge. Uh, that was a very good question. Um, so the oils um, that we would have used uh, would have been to coat the wooden mold. So it could have been easier for uh, when we would have done the canoe. So when we would take off the mold, the wooden mold, it wouldn't be, it would have provided a smoother finish and it wouldn't affect it uh, regarding like sticking or having difficulty removing it. Uh, the thicker the oil that we use would have helped us, will benefit more, would benefit us more uh, regarding that finishing touch, uh, if that answered your question. So, and I'll just give you another stab at it. Uh, how does using an oil-based lubricant affect your sustainability model? So I understand you use it as a release agent, but how does using a petrochemical affect your sustainability model? I.e., what are the environmental impacts of using an oil-based lubricant? Um, I don't believe, well, from my understanding, um, I don't believe it had any major effect on it. Um, well, regarding the research that I did and, uh, you know, professionals that offered me that option, uh, I don't believe, I believe they offered me that option uh, so that it wouldn't be affecting, uh, you know, the finishing. Okay. Um, what would you say the total cost of your canoe construction is? including like materials as well as uh, labor. Um, so we believe that um, um, the, the uh, I guess the, the whole cost of the canoe uh, would be rather low I feel like since we would be using um, recycled caustic aggregate, um, uh, like Brisa mentioned, we would be using uh, an, an oil-based lubricant. Um, that oil, we were actually planning on getting it from, uh, um, uh, how do you say, like a, 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 the, the truck, like the, the truck uh, place. Like we're, we're, once they use the oil, they just have it there. So we were planning on just reusing that also. So that would be like, you know, free and, um, the only true expense I think that we would have um, would be the mold um, to do the whole uh, cross sections of the mold and um, get the wood and, and, and the, the labor of that. Um, but I feel like uh, everything else um, from pre previous years also that we've gotten um, the materials donated um, from from you know the different companies, Samix and uh, other companies like that. Um, so I feel like through uh, that would be the most priciest thing of our, our, our whole project. Um, so I, I, I do feel like it would be rather low for the, uh, the whole construction of the canoe. Do you have an estimated ballpark number, not just uh, a quality of it? Um, I, we don't have one at the moment just because our project was based on a two year plan. And this year was the preliminary phase, which is more of the research, the mixed design um, and gathering all of that. And when we go ahead into next year for the phase two, uh, that's when we will do more of the estimating on the cost and also the construction part. So on this phase this year due to COVID, uh, we didn't really have uh, 
you know, we didn't really make one in person. We did more of the research. Uh, and next year for phase two, that's when uh, we would be, you know, taken in charge of the cost estimate of it. So at the moment, we don't have, a, you know, a, a more precise number. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and that is it for our judging time limit. Um, give me one second to make sure that the uh, paper deductions room is empty and then we can send you on your way. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time, Judge. Actually, you know what? She can just, I believe she'll admit you when it's empty. So <laughs> you can go ahead and head over the now. Uh, just captains need to be in there for that. But thank you. Um, there's no breakout room available. Uh, right, so you will back out of this Zoom call, and then if you go to the schedule, right underneath this uh, event, there'll be the deductions room, and you'll go into that Zoom. Okay, thank you so much for the clarification. Yep. No problem. All right, so it looks like up next we have UAEM. Hi, good morning. All right, judges ready? All right, UAEM, you are free to start. Okay, thank you. I'm going to share my screen. All right, can we start now? Yep, whenever you're ready. All right, thank you. All right, um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Ricardo, and I will be representing the Universidad Autónoma del Estado de México, along with Karen and Julio. Today, we will give you an insight into our canoe. To start off, for our entry this year, our inspiration was the Lady Baxi turtle, as it helps preserve its habitat, hence the name Lod. We are convinced that it takes the idea of environmental friendly construction further because we managed to tie to the way certain materials affect our planet and by applying green practices like recycling and reducing, we are able to safeguard our species. We prioritize aspects which we'll cover as we move forward, uh, like weight, design, structure, and performance on the water so that it could be through it fast and graciously. Jumping into the working system, as one might have already imagined, taking care of all our team members was one of our main objectives owing to COVID-19. Thereby, measures were implemented in order to maintain the health of our comrades. We divided the members into teams of the same category, such as whole design and mixed design, so that they would have both more personal guidance and a specialized area to tackle the tasks appropriately which was important as the majority of our members were novices. 
Also, due to the situation in Mexico, it was totally impossible to meet up. Uh, nevertheless, we implement digital meetings, which, as you might acknowledge, is currently a vital resource in many domains. This helps us to work as though we work together from the safety of our houses. Moving on to our internal structure, it is well known that sadly, the environment is getting worse and worse, thus being one of our main motivations to alter some aspects of our mix. As a result, on this occasion, we decided to substitute the expanded glass in our canoe for pumice stone and expanded clay. Plus the latter is certified for ecological construction, which is uh, the ANAB ICEA. We would like to briefly expand on this front we incorporated blast furnace lag into the mix. This will certainly reduce 16.97% of the cementitious material. This aggregate doesn't reduce the resistance of the concrete, but it will reduce the density of the canoe. Also, despite being be able to put into the practice, uh, we incorporate recycled PET in the mixture, uh, resulting in a reduction of 30% of manufactured fiber. Since our main concerns are durability, resistance, and above all, sustainability. Finally, some modifications to the hull when necessary to gain stability, lowering the risk of a rollover, therefore improving the paddle's safety. Both the bow and the stern were modifying the cross-section slope, reducing the center of gravity by 3% when compared to our previous canoes. And a small log was placed at the bottom of the canoe to ensure a straight direction. The profile of the canoe was modified by reducing its uh, 20 degrees horizontally, leaving a more aggressive first contact with water, bringing a new concept for a better rupture without losing the contact area of the walls with water. It is concave to avoid the possible rotation that results in rollover. We modified the chamfer so the reinforcement is on the interior of the canoe as it will perform better around the compression. And that's all for us right now. Thank you. Um, I believe it was the third slide you showed about your internal structures. There's a photo in the top. Um, it looked like an Excel chart. Could you explain that? Yeah, can, can we uh, see that, that reach, please? Yeah, that, that in that meeting, uh, we put them because it was the first idea of how we want to work this mixture uh, because uh, we are implementing new techniques uh, and a new material. Uh, one of them is the PET fiber. And we are doing a lot of research because this is a, a material that is trying to be a, a certified material, but uh, we uh, are in researching for for this and we prove and, and test this uh, PET uh, uh, with this Excel. And uh, well, it is why we put uh, the, this, this photo here. So in your structural analysis for the cross-section of your canoe, 
you idealize that section as a rectangular C shape. How closely do you believe that rectangular C resembles the actual section properties of your canoe? <laughs> okay, and that is a question that in that moment we we ask for us because we try to simplify that section in a, a rectangular form that it, it has uh, the maximum term and uh, we calculate for receive the, the maximum uh, threat possible. And um, we ensure that this uh, will be, uh, has the characteristic uh, if we compare with the, the C structure. And um, we are secure that the, this uh, construction and this structure uh, will be represent in a, a high uh, percent the, the same characteristics if we compare with a, a C structure. Okay. So on your PET, uh, in your paper, you mentioned that you're going to be doing PET collection uh, around the university. So where, what sources of PET are, are you getting from? And also, could you tell us what PET stands for? Well, PET stands for polyethylene terephthalate, but can you repeat the first part of the question, please? The, uh, you say in the paper that you're going to be collecting PET from uh, the university facility. So what sources are you looking for for your fibers? What, what kind of uh, campaign are you trying to get to collect this uh, fiber? Um, first of all, we're gonna uh, do a social media campaign either on Facebook or Instagram, because those are more prevalent. And uh, as you know, we have a large campus and we have a lot of faculties. So the idea is to have a compartment in each faculty so that um, the whole community of each faculty has the ability to um, recycle their material by giving us to us and we're gonna collect it to use it in the mold. And also, obviously we're not gonna use um, all of it. So we're gonna try to give some of that PET material to our recycling center. Okay. Um, can you please explain to me uh, normal safety procedures that you all follow for construction and testing? Well, for this year, we can't uh, test or can we and or a uh, mixture because of the circumstances of COVID. Uh, we we can go to lab, but in the past years, uh, they do a lot of tests with uh, his own his own and their own uh, mixture. And based in that uh, that information, we can suppose uh, something that we is going to change in this kind of and uh, is uh, how we can uh, secure this going to be real and it, it's going something that uh, could be better than the past year well it's something that we used to for uh, uh, other projects and we have the the complement that it's something that for for a hand it's a uh, certified with uh, for example, the, the expanded clay that we use is certified that it's an environmental material and it's going to to function. And for the other hand, we implemented the pet fibers that in our research, uh, this is going to uh, has a, uh, a good, uh, 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 well, a, a good uh, companion with with the mixtures and with the aggregates and the tenant and this is why we suppose that it, this will be function. Yeah, to add something to what Julio just mentioned, we even though we didn't were able to attend the lab, as as we mentioned, as we were most novices, 
we try to give them a brief explanation on this um, so that we, we had a meeting on Microsoft Teams in which we explained that to our comrades so that they could have all the knowledge even if we weren't in-person meetings. So in future competitions, we would have that knowledge. And for that, we, we base that in ASTM, well, in the ASI, sorry, the, the, the rules for, that, for, for making that information, for explaining that to our comrades. Can you explain to me the difference between quality assurance and quality control? Uh, well, for us, these uh, two two different things. It's not not as uh, so. Uh, for us, uh, the quality. It's for a sector. If I, an area has the the capability to do something for his own uh, hands, uh, they are going to do the best uh, form to try to do this thing. Uh, but we, or like our team, a complete team, we are trying to secure the quality. It is in all sectors. It is. It, it, the mixture it has to have the characteristics that all want to do and as well in the hall it's the same thing it's a quality for sector first uh, the first uh, wave and the other way it's going to be the quality of the complete uh, system and the complete project All right, Al. Well, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, you can now proceed to the deductions, the paper deductions room. You will leave the Zoom call and go join another one. You can find it in the schedule section of the uh, attendee five. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, University of Lasalle, you good to go? Yes. All right, perfect. Judges ready? Yes, ma'am. We can start now? Yep, you are free to start. Okay. Um, good morning. We are students from Universidad La Salle Victoria and we're going to present. Hold on, we're, we're having a little problem. I'm so sorry. Um, 
you're you're seeing the the presentation or something else we see your presentation okay oh, okay perfect would you like to restart yeah please okay, to go. okay. good morning we are students from Universidad La Salle from civil engineering and architecture and we are going to present our canoe for this year a starry star but focusing on a more sophisticated theme to the large quantity of architects. Taking as main theme, the art of Vincent Van Gogh. Next, please. First, we, we are going to talk about a hole and mesh. For this year, our hole is wider, the bottom is flat, and it is also not as large as normal. So it is really stable. Also, another thing we add is that it is symmetrical in the bow and in the stern, so it is even more stable. Hole dimensions. Conversion meters to feet. The hole is 19.685 feet long, 3.28 feet wide, and 2.29 feet high. This is the largest canoe we have ever made. The mesh used was a diamond mesh and a very thin one to facilitate its application and malleability. The staff was very small and mostly women. Consequently, we carried out precautions in the mode of application. Make the sign. The goal for this design is to develop a strong concrete mixture that can handle the pressure Due to the difficulty of obtaining the material, we had to improve and search for local alternatives. It ended up using normal gravel and sand, also for selected materials. This year, we decided to use the best of the options according to the case of the canoe, the Composite Portland Cement Extra CPC Extra. It provides graded cohesion and adherence, even with problematic aggregates such as lightening, eye agents, and fibers. The fibers selected for the secondary reinforcement were 100% virgin polypropylene fibers, and it helped a lot. Another material we used is Thermocrete Thermolita, a special expanded mineral perlite aggregate for formulating ultralight concrete. Pigments. We use different concentrations of pigment to color the canoe, creating a texture base, which once applied the first coat, we impregnate the surface with the pigment, creating the characteristic scenery of the starry night of Bengal. The final result. As you can see here, we have our canoe. It is something special for us today because even though to the large pandemic we are going through, we were able to make it and make it better than other years, I believe. Do you have something to say? And even with all the problematics that we have all been facing, I think we unite as two careers that have a lot in common to create this uh, result and we are very proud of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. That will be all. Shannon, you good to go? Okay. So if you could explain to me how you were able to mimic the brush swirls from the painting into your canoe. Yeah, um, I use uh, powder pigments, the one we color the, the mix concrete. So I, you, I dilute it in water and I impregnate the concrete to make it blue bluer because it was already blue in the bottom. And that's the way we created like a painting. 
also, uh, I use a residue of fabric that I found on the lab for that. It was like a hit of artistic inspiration for us. So, yeah. Okay. Any other question? Can you explain the difference between quality assurance and quality control? Um, well, quality control is when you manage to organize something and follow the process to make it as quality, high quality as, as possible. And for me, the quality insurance should be um, warranty that is going to be and um, achieve every quality control we are already assigned before. Thank you. Um, approximate how many man hours does it take to complete your canoe? Maybe like 100 hours because um, we, we made it really fast and then it took us like mm, two weeks. So because of the pandemic issues, we have to be like so little stuff as we could. And we tried to make it as fast as we could yeah, also. We, we, we planned everything uh, before. So that's why it took so less. Uh, do you have the final weight of your canoe or an estimate of it? We have it on kilograms. We haven't convert, converted it yet. It is 200 kilo, no, 185 kilograms. So in your canoe, you used, a, you used gravel and uh, sand and a lot of normal concrete mixtures. Did, have you tested out this canoe to see if it flows in water? Yeah, it flows. Um, we use it a normal material, use it for isolating roots. So it is very lightweight and it is manufactured in a, in a closed city to us. So it is why it flows. So what is the specific weight of your canoe then? Um, I, uh, we don't have it yet. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, you mentioned your team was quite small. Um, how do you propose uh, gaining new members for future builds? Um, this, we usually have a lot of stuff, just this one time because of the pandemic, we had it so short, but uh, for future years, we always start talking about it like in September and we try to excite the new students so they can learn and they can continue with the work uh, on the years to come. Even though that the construction of the canoe were during uh, spring break, we get to mm, like four students and teachers to help us. So you, you say that you shortened your canoe and you don't think that will affect stability. Have you tested this out? And uh, why do you believe that take, reducing the length of the canoe would not affect your stability? Um, in the bottom, we added a lot of more mixture, so it is heavier on the bottom, and that's why it is more stable. So when we try it out in water, it, it really floated and stay when it happened.
All righty. Um, I think we're good on questions. So you can now proceed to the paper deductions room. You will exit the Zoom call and join the other one that you can find in the schedule. Um, and Jess will let you in when she's ready. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. If you don't mind, I just need to take a short five minute break, please. Sounds good. We will, uh, Houston, we will start up in five minutes so you can have a little break. Houston, you good to go? Yes, we're ready. All right, um, are y'all going to share a screen that you want to go ahead and put up? Yes, I'll be sharing my screen. And then you're you're good to start whenever you're ready. Okay. All right. Can can y'all see my screen? Yeah. Uh, before before I get ready, I've been having unstable internet, so I may break up. Um, hopefully that won't happen during the presentation, but I just wanted to get that out of the way. Thanks for the heads up. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're, we're ready. Good morning, my name is Edgar Salazar. Hello, I'm Pablo Previesca. Today we'll be presenting the University of Houston's concrete canoe, the Phoenix. The following is an outline of what we're gonna be presenting. We're gonna start off with the team overview, followed up by the design and construction, and finally, a Q&A session. We chose the name of the Phoenix to symbolize our, our return from a tough year that we had last year due to COVID, and also to symbolize our rebuilding of our canoe and improvement on the canoe from last year, Grafito. We had a nine-person team who worked 100% remotely. And on this table on the right, you can see the dimensions of the canoe, the Phoenix, and last year's canoe, Graffito. As you can see, we made some changes to the dimensions to maximize the perform performance of our canoe. When we received the, the request for proposals, we realized that we had to find a balance between the concrete mix design, the whole design, and the structural design to get the, up the best results. So as part of our first focus area, we performed a hydrostatic analysis using MaxServ on both Graffito, which is the canoe from last year, and our canoe for this year, uh, the Phoenix. We tested the resistance, the speed, and stability in order to find the best possible hull design. This resulted in a 15% reduction of the maximum width. It also resulted in a 7% decrease in the length and a 25% re reduction in the thickness of the canoe. Okay, so also for the structural design, uh, we went through different loading scenarios. So our canoe will not fail under any. Uh, so the key takeaway from what was outlined in the request for a proposal was that <clears throat> the moment uh, could change. Um, that means that the tension and the compression are gonna flip at some point. And also getting the cracking and ultimate moment or the service moment. So from the structural design, we could estimate what was needed for the uh, F prime C. And we focus on two main things after obviously getting the compressive strength. So the sustainable design um, for the concrete was the use of fly ash and coconut shell. Uh, fly ash is very common as a replacement for cement. So I I'm, don't need to talk about it much, but the coconut shell is not very common. But through research, we found that it was a great replacement and because it lowers the impact of the environment. Then another aspect for the concrete mix was the lightweight 
Um, we wanted to improve upon the weight of last year's canoe too. It was a little bit heavy, so we wanted to lower that. Uh, we use volcanic scoria because, scoria because it's very lightweight and it has the strength necessary for the concrete canoe. And also we use foam spheres because we couldn't use the manufacturer sphere, uh, microspheres that were outlined in the RFI. Here, uh, here are the estimates for the concrete mix uh, design. Unfortunately, since COVID, uh, we couldn't go to the lab and like test different uh, concrete mixes. These are estimates from research and like how we think it should behave. So the, the these are very rough estimates, but we found that the compressive strength was sufficient and the unit weights were lower than the waters. Here is the outline of how we would have constructed the canoe. Hopefully that's a good representation of how uh, the pictures of how we have would have built the canoe. And lastly, our budget uh, was estimated to be 120, around 120,000. There were nine key members, UH students who made this possible and 100% cook talent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you all need me to stop sharing? If you could keep it up, that'd be fine. Yeah, you can keep okay. it up. I'm ready for questions. Is everybody else? Yeah. Good. What was the specific weight of your concrete mix? Uh, 60.7 or 0.9 for the what? And you're dry? My dry 59.8, I believe. Okay, thank you. There, uh, the correct. So you're using coconut shell as an aggregate. Where are the, what sources are you getting these coconut shells from and how do you plan on crushing them to meet the requirement as a fine aggregate for your concrete mixture? idea how do you call this uh, a what so this this uh, is used for uh, filtration systems and they already uh, find aggregates like they're already fine particles so that was one idea and the other one was to look around for uh, available coconuts. And those available coconuts, how are you gonna crush them down to the right size? Oh, so yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, it would be experimental. So we're, we, that would have been done in the lab and um, we would experiment through it um in since we found through research that it was possible to use coconut shell we were sure that we could implement it into our concrete mix um but i am not sure how the procedure have would have gone okay what's the difference between quality assurance and quality control Is 
the uh, quality assurance is making sure that we're pr producing a product of, of good quality that up to the standards that are that are being asked to and quality control is making sure that the product is is a, is a good product. Um, in your fee estimate, you have, it looks like uh, based on the, uh, shoot, I just saw that in front of me, but it looks like based on the uh, unit prices for, per hours, you have a lot of uh, highly paid individuals, like out, lots of hours for highly paid individuals, such as project managers or uh, like principal design um, engineers. So can you uh, explain to me how you or why you allocated so many hours to uh, higher level employees rather than like EITs? So this, this year we had a smaller team than usual due to COVID. So a lot of the work was done by uh, these individuals that formed uh, the core of the team. Last year we had a team of around 30 members and around 10 of them were, were core members and the rest were EITs. But this year, we, we didn't have as many students, students come out. So a lot of the work had to be done by the people who were also leading the, their individual departments. All right. Um, in your uh, video of construction, you show uh, several disconnected pieces of your mesh reinforcement. Do you have any concerns about stresses and the areas where the mesh is not like connected? Oh, okay. So since that was a schematic video, it's not, it, it would have been connected throughout. Um, I wasn't able to get it through to be um, third, like connected throughout. All right, it looks like we are good for uh, questions. If you can now proceed to the paper deductions room by exiting this call and jumping on the other one via the uh, attended by schedule, uh, Jess will get with you about the sections. So thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, it looks like uh, Tech de Monterey is up next. We're ready. Judges, we all good? One second, please. Okay. I am ready. All right, Monterey, you are free to start. Today, more than ever, we stood together as a team, highlighting our commitment and our champion spirit, which is the meaning of our new name. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Shikai. This has been a tough year for everyone. We have been trying to live a type of life we weren't prepared for, but most importantly, this pandemic has taken many people away from us. One of Mexico's most important traditions is a celebration of the Day of the Dead, in which families gathered together to honor and remember deceased loved ones. Therefore, we decided to honor the people that are no longer with us by designing Digger Canoe with the team, a Day of the Dead altar.
For project management, our team focused on improving communication management. Here we define the roles by adding a new one that serves as a link between the captain and the coordinators. Also, we implemented communication management tools such as the RACI metrics to establish the responsibility of each member. On the other hand, for operational management, we are using the last planner system that was used in our 2020 Cano, which seeks for the reduction of inconvenience. And where with the help of a weekly online board, the team had meetings to manage the tasks. Our MITS design aims to provide NetSure team the necessary groundwork, research, and procedures to create a sustainable MITS with low density and high workability without losing strength. For our team, sustainability is one of the main goals in our MITS design. Incorporating sustainable materials to our MITS is a top priority. Flyage and recycled polypropylene stand out for their low environmental impact. With the current rules and regulations, our team decided to incorporate our 2019 concrete canoe to our MITS as the recycled concrete aggregate. Also, we currently have in stock and properly stored some of our aggregates and fiber mesh from previous competitions, eliminating the need to purchase them again. Finally, consulting previous captains and students, we collected feedback on what changes could be done regarding procedures and net visitors use to predict how our MITS will behave. Slump and setting time were two important variables on casting day. Due to our current situation, it was very difficult for us to come with completely new modifications in order to make improvements to our design. That's why we decided to put our focus on analyzing and evaluating last year's performances, selecting the best qualities of each one, and then putting them together in this year's canoe. Within the whole design and structural analysis, we challenged ourselves to reach the 2019 canoe dimension by reducing its school thickness from 0.75 to 0.6 inches. With this change, and by removing the structural ribs that were integrated last year, we obtained a much lighter canoe, which is also easier to handle. We analyzed six different scenarios, where a critical one was the four-person COVID race. Our team has been always been focused on generating processes that guarantee the final quality of the canoe. So for Shikai, preventing cracks was our main goal, as in pristine locations, we, we noticed this happened when we didn't reach the whole design thickness. And with this idea in mind, it was decided to pair our existing female mold with a brand new main mold. Finally, we want Shikai to become the first canoe to be casted since 2016 in our school, as all the previous canoes were built in a factory owned by a former student. That will give us access to our campus laboratory table and many other amenities. As a result of having to move remotely, it was decided to incorporate a full by IM 5D model of the canoe, which will assemble every part of the project in one place. For instance, this will let each member of the team access to all the data, making it easier to verify and integrate the elements before the construction is completed, reducing the risk of discrepancies, mistakes, and material waste. Equally important by adding time and cost to the model it will become easier to train our casting day staff and it could be used for future canoes as a template. We have had a lot of uncertainty when it comes to the flotation test. In fact, this has resulted in the need of using additional flotation material in order to pass this test. We decided to take this as an opportunity to deeply analyze the root causes of this problem. We model our canoe using float zone to get the exact difference between the position of the canoe's center of buoyancy and its center of mass. As a result, we created a procedure based on equations that will also allow future teams to calculate the exact length of flotation material that the canoe needs to guarantee an uniform flotation and to pass this test without affecting its performance during the race. Thank you very much for your attention. This was Shikai. Judges ready for questions? Yeah. Okay. What do you think has a bigger impact on the speed of your canoe? Paddling or the geometry of the canoe? Uh, we, we think that, that both have a, an impact, but we, we do consider that the geometry for canoe has a bigger impact because the cross section can affect directly on the drag force of the drag force, sorry, that is acting on the canoe. Okay. 
in the moment diagram you showed, all conditions except for the four person co ed were symmetrical. Can you explain why the four person co ed moment was not? Yes, was it was a, a requisite that the in, in the first half of the canoe, the forces were distributed in a in a different way that, than the second half of the canoe. So the paddlers were not equally distributed along, alongside the, the two halves of the canoe. Um, in your paper, you state that uh, the mold that you've used before uh, has to be reused for five years in order to provide economic benefit. How did you determine that it would need to be reused for those five years? Well, in the 2018 paper for Kai Kai, uh, that's where the mall was first built. And so they determined in, ba in basing how much it costs and how much, uh, my, how much uh, time it could be used. It was determined that the perfect lifetime for, for this mall will be five years, but it can be used for, for more years if we, if we want. So when using recycled concrete as a fine aggregate, uh, the absorption capacity of the fine aggregate can vary pretty significantly between different tests. How do you expect that to affect when you're mixing your concrete and uh, any problems you'll run into due to excess or not enough water into your mix? Yes. Uh, what we need to do there is as soon as we get access into our lab is to proceed with the demolition of our old concrete canoe and start testing to see how the uh, water absorbed affects our workability. So we need to do testing on that. What is the difference between quality assurance and quality control? Quality control is fulfilling the requirements. Uh, it is being asked in, in, in uh, at first, and then quality assurance is uh, making sure that your processes and your how are well done and were prepared. Can you tell me the benefits of using fly ash in the concrete mixture just related to your mixture only? Yes, we decided to use class F fly ash. It, it is lighter and class F is a pozzolanic uh, fly ash. It absorbs the free hydrates from the chemical reaction between cement and water. And it just helps you to decrease your weight without losing strength because it provides some cementitious properties. Um, in your uh, detailed fee estimate from your paper, you have a large number of al hours allocated to principal design engineers and project design engineers across many uh, different aspects. Uh, what made you decide to allocate so many hours to that as opposed to uh, lower cost uh, members such as EITs? In previous canoes, we noted that the most important thing for a canoe and for its success is we have a better understanding of positions and times. And therefore, we decided this year to allocate most of our budget to our project managers. In your structural analysis portion of your report, I do not see identified your support conditions, i.e. your boundary conditions. How did you idealize those? Where did you place them? And how did you come to that conclusion? Well, we, we, have, we used the same support conditions that were used in previous years. Um, we idealized we idealize them by by taking the beam as a by taking the canoe as a beam, so it could be easier for us to to obtain those moments, and for for the for the scenarios where we were asked where we were asked to to place the canoe in water, um, we we just idealize the the buoyancy force as a as a distributed load acting below the canoe. Uh, 
questions? I'm tapped. All right, Monterey, thank you for your time. You can now proceed to the paper deductions room. We will leave the Zoom call and join another one via the schedule section of the 10 to 5. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Judges ready? Texas a and are you all here and good to go? Yes, ma'am. We're getting set up right now. Um, do we start whenever we're ready or? Yes, you're, you're free to start. Howdy, my name is Kristen Howes. My name is Thomas Cunningham. And my name is Ethan Harris, and we are representing the 2020-2021 Texas A&M Concrete Committee team. COVID-19 has heavily impacted the way our organization operates. Since we cannot meet in person, the structure of our organization has drastically changed to operate solely on an online format. This year, as we overcome these new and unique challenges, our team has sought to improve the whole design, the construction methods, the quality assurance and quality control practices during the concrete placement, as well as modifying the mixed design and tensile reinforcement scheme. Our first objective was to improve the whole design, optimizing for speed, stability, and mobility. The overall length and thickness of the hull were reduced while maintaining the longer deck plate design from our previous prototype, Susanna. These modifications allowed us to reduce our overall weight, increase our mobility, and shorten the surface time during the swamp test. The team then chose to investigate the shape of the stem, shape of the bottom, and overall symmetry of the canoe to determine their effects on the prototype performance. To adequately measure the effects of these variables, multiple SOLIDWORKS models were created and placed into a computational fluid dynamics modeling program to evaluate their drag coefficient as a function of the whole shape. Based on the outputs of our computational fluid dynamics modeling and the naval architecture research uh, conducted by the team, we have selected an asymmetrical sweet form design with a rounded stem and a rounded bottom. The cross section of this selected design can be seen on the slide in comparison with the previous two prototype designs, PREV and Ellie. The next goal the team focused on was improving upon our construction methods. One of the issues using a male placing technique in the previous years is the reduced accuracy in the shaping of the end caps. This is due to there being no guiding fiberglass at either end of the canoe. On the figure to the left of our PowerPoint presentation, you can see a comparison between our former prototype Susanna versus its SOLIDWORKS drawing and the, and the discrepancies between the two photos. To fix this issue, our team has come to the conclusion it is best to convert our male mold into a modified female fiberglass mold. This female mold will come in two easily detachable halves split down the center line of the canoe to make the demolding process simple and efficient. In doing so, we can anticipate that this mold can be reused for many years down the line. Switching to a female mold placing technique did present anticipated constructability issues in regards to the pretension steel cables used in previous prototypes. In order to maintain the structural integrity of our hull, we decided it to switch to three layers of concrete with two layers of reinforcement. The outermost layer of reinforcement will consist of a lightweight, flexible basalt mesh geogrid, which will be cut and tied using 20-pound fishing line to conform to the shape of the entire hull. 
Uh, basalt mesh is a lightweight fibrous material, which is flexible and as strong as metal reinforcement. The innermost layer of reinforcement will be located only in areas with a moment of 75 foot pounds or greater as based on the four paddler loading case, which can be seen in the diagram on the slide. This reinforcement will consist of a more rigid geotechnical reinforcement, TerraGrid. TerraGrid is made of polycoated yarns, is lightweight, resistant to chemical degradation, and provides a high bonding strength. The mix design team had several objectives. The first was the development of a joint mix design and structural demand spreadsheet. This leads to a new and improved method of concrete mix design where strength requirements guide the design process. These spreadsheets are designed to be user-friendly and easily modified to aid in the creation of future mixes. Our second goal was the selection of new aggregate materials. Based on um, new design guidelines, we were restricted to a single mix, which must balance density and strength. A desire for renewable and sustainable materials guided our decision towards LDPE pellets and shredded EPS, which have never been used by the team before. Both of these materials are recycled and lightweight and offer our desired uh, structural capabilities. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, all mixed design was performed theoretically using scholarly articles, optimization calculations, and prior experience of the team. Our final goal was to improve upon our quality assurance and quality control processes during the placement of the canoe. In recent years, we, we have utilized two teams, a batching team and a placing team. The batching team typically created the concrete and gave it over to the placing team who would place the concrete onto the canoe. We're gonna maintain these two teams while adding an additional quality assurance team. This team will monitor over the placing team using the back end of a caliper as a depth gauge to ensure uniformity along the walls. In doing so, we can anticipate decreased standing time as well as a more even canoe for more stability in the water. Thanks to the hard work of our team, we've been able to improve our hull design, construction methods, QAQC practices, as well as our mixed design and tensile reinforcement design. As a result, Texas a &M University is proud to present our prototype, Valkyrie. Thanks and giga. All right, thank you. Give us just one sec. That is ready. Yeah. All right, perfect. Um, can you please uh, explain to me the difference between accuracy and precision? Yes, ma'am. Accuracy typically pertains to how close you can hit onto the target, while precision is how how close the grouping is between the the uh, the trials. Can you explain to me what a pozzolan is? Um, a pozzolan is a cementitious material, um, which is different pozzolans have different properties. Um, some of them act um, have uh, cementitious properties. Other act others act as uh, cement replacers. Um, they we use two cement uh, pozzolan materials, uh, fly ash and metaphor, um, and yes, sorry. In your the structural analysis portion of your report, it does not appear that you have identified boundary conditions fully supported beam. Yet you manage to create a shear and moment diagram which would require such applications. How did you arrive at these conclusions without applying boundary conditions to your loading diagram? Can you explain upon boundary conditions a little bit better? You don't have any support conditions. In our, in our diagram, we actually do have support conditions at the buoyancy force of the canoe. Is that what, not what you're talking about, sir? Your, no, that's not. Um, 
you it appears that you in your sharing moment diagram you somehow idealize this as a simply supported beam if you had the entire beam supported across its length you wouldn't have any reaction in the moment you wouldn't have any moment forces or moment loads so how do you arrive at these share and moment diagrams without support conditions such as they should be? Um, one of the assumptions that we made was that we needed the moments to be uh, zero at the ends of either of the beam in order to avoid an overturning moment um, at the end. So uh, forcing the moments at the end to become zero, we, um, uh, our, our buoyancy force was broken down into two. So one a uniform load with a triangular load on top. So there was a higher buoyancy force at the end of the canoe where there was a greater distribution of paddler loads um, because that uh, portion of the canoe would be forced lower into the water by the higher loads. So the buoyancy force was greater. All right, let me follow up with one more question then. If I had a beam that was continuously supported along its length, would I have any moment applied to the beam? No. Okay. Uh, in your presentation, you mentioned about the construction process um, creating a, I believe it was like a prototype female mold that would be bent in half to remove the canoe. What material do you propose uh, creating that with? It will not be bent in half. We have a current male mold right now, and we're going to modify it into a female mold. So what we're going to do is we're going to overlay our former SOLIDWORKS model that was used to create this fiberglass mold into our new Valkyrie mold, which will then, we will cut the difference. We will take that to a CNC shop and they'll cut out the foam to create a fiberglass molding that, sorry, not fiberglass, a styrofoam molding, which will go inside the canoe, which we will then cover with fiberglass. Um, so we're not molding anything new. We are just taking what we have right now and modifying it. In your uh, budget, you discuss how the new mix design sheet you guys created is going to significantly reduce the amount of in-person uh, mix testing necessary. Uh, so can you explain how it's going to reduce based off previous years? What's the difference between having this mix design sheet that you have now and, and what you had before? Yes. Um, so basically our mix design sheet, we have more accurate um, answers in what we're going to do to make a mix. Previous years, we were using trial and error to kind of fine tweak our mix, but that wasn't, it wasn't sustainable. So using an Excel spreadsheet to determine how we can create our mix, we can assume that we will reduce how much concrete we are making. So for the upcoming year, we want to try reducing it by a third, or sorry, reducing it to make only a third of the mixes. And I feel like the Excel spreadsheet will definitely help us out in that, in that sense. In the presentation, you talked about using two different types of sea grid or reinforcement in the canoe um, with loading conditions over a certain point. Uh, two of them in that moment diagram look like you'll have to weld or bind the two together. Did you ever consider just using the more um, strenuous one as the continuous for ease of construction? Um, an issue with using the tear grid is that it's a really rigid reinforcement. So um, shaping it to the hole is uh, very difficult and um, using that one in, in smaller areas allows us to overcome the issues of the rigidity and uh, put a slightly heavier reinforcement. So using it in smaller areas reduces our weight. So in your report, when you do your sectional analysis to determine the stresses in your canoe, you have idealized that section as a rectangular C shape. How closely do you believe that resembles the actual stresses in the canoe shape since there is a significant difference in the geometry? Um, it is definitely uh, a a difference, um, especially this year, we're switching to a more rounded bottom, so it will be a greater difference. Um, but we believe that it is a close enough assumption, and um, if anything, we will be over designing because we're uh, applying larger loads than will actually be applied. 
Um, any concerns about the rounder hole shape uh, as far as paddling goes, considering that previous designs have had a flatter bottom? Um, based on the research that we have conducted, we actually determined that this, this uh, rounder bottom should increase our stability and paddlers stay upright. I think that's our question limit. All right. Well, um, thank you for y'all's time. Uh, go ahead and head into the um, paper deductions room. You will exit this call and join the one from the schedules and the attendee. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Uh, I believe it's Kingsville. Uh, Kingsville. Okay. Hmm. Is anyone from Texas A&M Kingsville on? Give them a couple of minutes to show up if not.
Okay, seeing no one from uh, Kingsville is Texas Tech ready and online. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm just about uh, ready. I'm waiting for my fellow co-captain to join. If we could have just a, a couple more minutes to wait that happen. Uh, let that happen, please. No worries. All right, I believe is he's here. Tan, are you ready to go? I am. All right, well, we're ready to get started then. Give me just one second, please. All right, I think the judges are ready, yes? Sorry, sorry. Take your time. Don't have to rush it. It's okay. Okay, now I believe we're ready. All right, so my name is Colin Longley. My name is Tanner Schmidt. And we were the Concrete Canoe Captains for Texas Tech this year. Our theme, we decided on a Western theme, but we wanted to focus on the steam locomotive, hence our team's name, Big Iron. Um, for our canoe design, we wanted to keep the asymmetrical fish form shape from previous years, but we wanted to experiment with a larger canoe and also to make sure we provided our paddlers with enough room. So we increased the length to 20 feet, we increased the uh, maximum width to 28 inches, and we increased the depth to 14 inches. Uh, this slide shows our top view, uh, side view, section view, and our detailed view. We kept the 1 16th inch steel cables from previous years. Um, to, for our primary or primary reinforcement. These will be placed along both sides and the bottom canoe like in previous years to make sure we have enough support for our paddlers. Uh, our structural analysis team started, at, started out by identifying key loading scenarios. These were identified as the COA race, the men's race, and also the transporting of the canoe. And you can see our loading, uh, our moment graph on the right. And then these were modeled in a simply, simply supported beam to um, determine the maximum loadings. Uh, this slide shows our total specifications. Um, due to COVID-19, we were not able to work in the lab this year. So all our strength, all our strength values are estimated using online research um, and our air content uh, unit weights and weight estimates were all estimated using uh, the calculations outlined uh, in the presentation back in October. And our lengths and maximum width and depth are listed on the left as well. We kept our average thickness, thickness this year the same as in previous years because we had positive uh, results with that. Uh, this slide shows our mixture proportions. We wanted to make sure to keep a, a 2000 PSI uh, compressive strength. So we used a water cement ratio of 0.5. Our cementitious materials break up by volume, uh, or just our cementitious materials uh, break up by volume is shown on the right. We use type one Portland cement and ground granulated blast furnace slag. Uh, we used both of these in previous years to positive results, so we wanted to keep that. And we added fly ash uh, class F to improve workability and also maintain some long-term strength gain without um, uh, making the canoe any heavier. 
our aggregates, we chose Utilite or Expanded Shale, which we have uh, used uh, with good results in the past uh, in terms of strength. And to make our canoe lighter this year, we decided to use styrofoam and cork. These are new materials and these have not been used in previous years. I'll hand it over to Tanner. All right, and so for this slide, we just wanted to demonstrate our a schedule for this year. Um, this year has been quite challenging for, I'm sure, many of the schools that have presented thus far. And for us, it has been especially challenging um, with new developments at Texas Tech that we've had to effectively um, transition from a different location. Um, but we've, we've done this slowly over the process to try to help with this year's competition and to improve team morale and uh, to help with the future scheduling. And so Colin, if you'll switch to the next slide. And so here we have our proposed schedule for the 2021-2022 uh, semesters. And so we wanted to make sure, as I said previously, that we set out on a good example um, for future generations of competitors um, for Texas Tech and to provide them with a clean shop, provide them with tools that they can use to uh, build a canoe that will be reliable. And that is something that I believe that we have proven to show effectively with the schedule. And I believe it will be helpful for years to come. And Colin. And then here's our expenditure list. Um, as you can see, our transportation costs are quite high. Uh, this is due to the fact that we, our, our trailer for our canoe is still uh, unfortunately damaged, but we are actually in the process right now of um, fixing that. Um, we have people in our organization who are in charge of fixing that, and so we are on the process of having that remediated. Colin? And then this is our final slide, is our, I believe our final slide for the bill of materials. And as Colin said previously, we decided to switch from using pour aver because um, in this year's rules, um, that was um, restricted. So we believe that using styrofoam, cork, and utilite as our aggregates for a, a lightweight aggregate would be more beneficial um, in keeping the lightweight concrete, but also maintaining the same strength. Colin? All right, and that's the end of our presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Judges ready for questions? Mm -hmm. All right. So we noticed uh, yesterday during the video presentations um, that you guys didn't have one um, as required by the rules. Is there any reason for that? Uh, we had a lot of trouble getting into contact with um, people to uh, have the interview with. We contacted I don't know how many people contacted, Tanner contacted, but I know I contacted at least um, seven or eight different people that never respond. And I believe his numbers are similar. Um, it's not that we didn't want to, it's just we had a lot of trouble getting someone to actually interview with us. In fact, we had someone just, I think, email us back yesterday um, that they were willing to help, but it was just a little bit too late for that. Gotcha, I just wanna follow up with another question here, if I may. Um, so many schools, uh, and I think a lot of these judges can agree because we, you know, many years ago were also involved in ASC student chapters, um, relied heavily on our continued integration and communication with alumni, um, not only for fundraising efforts, but future employment and issues like that, because um, they're great resources often and they're very willing to help uh, the students. How do you propose to re-engage with those people since it seems like you had a very difficult time? What do you see in the future as your path forward for maintaining those relationships? 
Um, so I can't necessarily do anything about the previous years that we had trouble contacting, but I know I want to make sure that I give uh, my future email uh, um, to the next year uh, canoe captains and the year after that. And I believe that we're working with um, our faculty advisor to make sure we have a one single one drive where all our contacts can be placed, um, where all our previous documents uh, from this year can be placed so that future um, canoe captains and future uh, team presidents uh, can just go in that, find that email. And then it's, it'll just be on us um, personally to make sure we answer those emails. And, I, and that's what I plan to do is answer any email from any future uh, team member who wants to contact me. Gotcha. I, I just have one more question. I'm really sorry for occupying all the time. What is the average grade level on your team? Uh, I got to say, Junior, uh, we had a lot of trouble getting people involved this year with COVID. Uh, and with our shop moving, we couldn't even have uh, people coming to the shop. It was just a huge mess. Uh, it wasn't really safe to have people in there right now. So it's really just Junior, just because that's Tanner and I. We're both Junior levels. So um, next year, we're not going to be concrete canoe captains, but we're going to try to get some younger people, sophomores uh, and freshmen uh, interested. We had a couple people join, but then after a couple months, they just kind of dropped off. Uh, because we weren't really doing anything in person they stopped attending meetings so uh so yeah it, it, junior level but that's really only because it's tanner and i so if things continue the way they are and god forbid there's still no uh in-person meetings next year what do you all plan on doing to make sure the same thing that happened this year doesn't happen next year um, I honestly put this last year on myself. I, I can make excuses, but I could have been a lot better about just trying to get people mo motivated, interested. I've gotten better at that. So really, I think the responsibility is just on me to really present people with a um, with something that they want to be in. I just don't think I did that effectively this last year, but I believe I can do it effectively next year because I've learned from kind of the mistakes I made. And also, even at, uh, the other problem was just the, the, our shop location moving. That made it so we couldn't even show people kind of what we'd done last year in limited capacity, bring a couple people out, bring a couple people out another weekend. Um, but hopefully that problem should be resolved so we won't have that in the future. So that will definitely um, make a positive benefit or have a positive benefit. Uh, segwaying away from membership, uh, how did y'all come up with the final unit cost of all your materials for your expected bills of materials? So for us, it was just about finding a um, reasonable uh, estimation just using online resources. So um, there are obviously lots of resources to estimate these sort of things um, based off of uh, either previous semesters textbooks. So usually like, for example, we use um, our a, a construction materials textbook to estimate some of these costs or looking online for uh, previous um, like construction materials um, costs through online resources. So plenty of professional organizations have things up online that we use to estimate the cost. Um, in your report, you say that you use a flat bottom, sorry, a flat bottom hole design um, to uh, maintain maneuverability. Can you please explain how a flat bottom canoe will do that? Um, I based that uh, mostly on what we had seen in previous years. We had no problems with maneuverability in previous years that I noted and, and flat bottom had been used last year and the year before. So uh, I mainly just based it off of research from previous tech canoes. Okay, and then can you also um, please tell me how you identify critical path tasks and what your critical path was? Um, well, I think, uh, well, Colin, if you wanna answer, but. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so by critical path, just so I, I make sure I, I, I got you correctly, do you mean like the loading scenarios or, or what do you mean? Critical path refers to more like your, your scheduling tasks. Oh, uh, Tanner might be better to suited to, to answer that question than sorry, I was confused. Yeah, well, so as I was going to say that for us, I believe that they were, to be honest, this semester has been kind of a, uh, a bit of a hassle to put it lightly. Um, 
So our critical paths are actually quite clear. We, we Colin and I set out last year um, discussing after last year's competition with um, people in, within our organization and actually previous alumni um, reaching out and just telling us about what to expect. We actually had an idea moving forward of what we wanted to try to do. Obviously, that's not how it always pans out, but um, we believe that we actually have a very clear idea of how to identify uh, our critical paths and how to move forward with that in coming semesters. And to tie back with what uh, I believe is it pronounced Saif, I believe what he said earlier is that um, if, you know, unfortunately, if something were that, you know, that the, if we are online next semester, I believe that this same critical path idea that we said or moving forward would be able to be used um, for future uh, canoes and stuff like that so that we can identify these sort of things. So it's really, I believe, something that as much as we've had trouble, I believe that it's something that um, actually we've had a lot of experience at. Can you all tell me the difference between air entrainment and air entrapment? Um, so I believe air entrapment is to make sure uh, the canoe has air particles throughout the, the mix design uh, so that it uh, can float better. And I think air entrainment is it make sure that those particles are even, so there's no sections of a large air bubble that compromises strength. Okay, uh, just one more question I think we have time for. Can you please tell me the difference between quality assurance and quality control? So I believe that con con quality uh, assurance is someone kind of um, being there, making sure that everyone's uh, following all the rules, that uh, nothing kind of gets done without you know someone checking it. And quality control is like the process um, by which that is done. I think that's it for questions, right? I think we're good. Unless anyone else has something. Um, thank you, Texas Tech, for your time. Uh, you can now leave this Zoom call and join the paper deduction Zoom call via the schedule and identify, and Jess will uh, talk to you about deductions. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it looks like we lost one of our judges, so UT Austin will just be a couple of minutes. Judges ready? Okay. Austin, you are free to start whenever you're good or whenever you're ready. Sorry, I just want to check that you guys can hear us. Yes. Thank you.
Um, all right, just want to clarify, I'm Zachariah Smith. I'm Nathan Singh. We have two more presenters, uh, Boris Philick and Ann Tran. And... The University of Texas at Austin, the Concrete Canoe Program is a hub for professional and social interaction. As the international disaster that was COVID-19 gripped our program, shifted all activities for the year to fully online, our members were completely stranded. This desperate situation motivated our team to adopt the wreath, a theme that not only inspired the creation of our canoe, but our student community as a whole. In spite of current circumstances, which have prevented in-person meetings for the past year, our team has still managed to develop a design and create a plan of action for a canoe that can be built by the 2021 to 2022 team. In respect to project management, we break up the project into bubbles, a mixed bubble, a construction bubble, etc and allow students to cultivate the experience they want out of canoe using the system. For each of these microgroups, we appoint a lead, a student who has shown to be both knowledgeable and dedicated to lead these groups in independent meetings and decision-making. This allows captains to still have oversight of the program as a whole, but allows trusted members to commandeer vital tasks at their own pace. In anticipation of the newer powers to come in the following fall, we design our canoe to be more accommodating to beginners while balancing performance related aspects such as maneuverability. Our design achieves these goals through a reduced length, rounder bottom, decreased rocker, and a more gradual change in cross section. Once designed in Excel, a MATLAB script was run on our whole design in both the longitudinal and transverse directions to ensure the canoe could withstand competition loading. In the previous concrete canoe competition, our team broke the mold of UT Austin tradition by delving into self-consolidating concrete for the first time. After countless hours of research and testing, the success of the experiment proved that SCC is what the reef should move forward with. And so this year's mix design became focused on one thing, optimization. Our goal is to create a lightweight, strong mix that was cohesive and wouldn't separate. As for the RFP, microspheres were removed from consideration. With that, our team spent countless hours in desktop study over lightweight aggregates that would meet our specifications and came up with two new aggregates for us to integrate, expanded shale and pumice. The team is able to create a theoretical mix that will meet our expectation, but the mix team was barred from conducting any testing this year as the mixing labs are shut down. In the event of our two-year product schedule, the team will have more than a running head start in the fall 2021 semester to test and create the best SCC mix the university has to offer. Following in last year's team's footsteps, our team decided on a double mold system again for the reef, however, with various improvements to bypass the predecessor's issues. Firstly, this year's mold will be constructed out of wood and have the pre-tensioning cable system placed on the male mold to prevent collapse. During pour day, instead of relying on a light and photoresistor system to check for voids in the concrete, our team will go for the simpler approach by laying concrete in the female mold first before placing the male mold in and pouring the rest of the canoe out. Then our canoe will be cured in a fog tent for 28 days before being patched, sanded, and then sent off for competition. This year, our team also considered that latency during the construction process occurred when team leads were unable to communicate complex engineering design effectively. Our team solved to solve this problem through an enhanced focus area, sent to build a small scale model of the canoe's dual mold. With a small model made from simple materials, ideas can be much more easily displayed, but potentially building efficiency during events will increase. At last year's regional competition, it became apparent that we could have done better aesthetically. We selected this problem as something to solve with an enhanced focus area. Our response was to proliferate the aesthetics team and elevate it to the level of building the mold or designing the mix. We held independent meetings where students worked together to create a strong, comprehensive idea for the design of all aspects of the canoe. We used drawings to create models of varying ideas and renders from those to communicate our ideas effectively. Pushing further, we came up with plans of action on creating these components, setting the path so that we would be able to achieve these goals in the coming year. But greater than that, we believe we have created a new pillar for the UT Austin program to stand on and something we encourage the future teams of our school to employ. Given the obstacles this past year has presented us, our team has still strived to further the design of our canoe and pass on to future years relevant knowledge and experience, leading to the construction of a final product that will embody our tradition of excellence. Thank you, and we are now ready for questions.
Everybody ready for questions, judges? Yeah. Cool. If you don't mind me starting. So in your report in your presentation, you indicate that you used uh, pretensioning cables for your reinforcement. How did you determine the proper pretensioning force such that you have the appropriate elastic deformation that will be required to force the canoe into compression after you release the tendons? Uh, every year we tension them to 100 pounds each cable and we have five cables in total. Um, this is just standard practice. It might be overcompensation. Can you explain to me how the L and the U box test works in your concrete mix testing? Uh, so the L box uh, tests the canoe flowing and then making sure that it passes through the reinforcement. And so it flows in adequate length, but also contains like it meets together through the reinforcement. And the U box does the same where we're trying to see if the concrete mix will pass through the uh, reinforcement because we have the reinforcement inside of our canoe. We want to make sure we're getting concrete on both sides. In the structural analysis portion of your report, you show a free body diagram or your loading diagram, and it does not appear to show support conditions. Yet you manage to obtain a shear and moment diagram that seems to reflect a simply supported beam. How did you arrive at those conclusions without having support conditions in your initial diagram? So uh, when performing structural analysis over the canoe, we assumed that the canoe would behave like a beam and the cross sections were rectangular. So uh, the uh, moment diagram representing simple beam con conditions uh, seems to represent the assumption that we made in our structural calculations. But those aren't present in the diagram. So how do we know that they're correct? I know that a uh, list of the assumptions were listed above the structural calculations before they were worked out in the appendix. Um, in your presentation and in your paper, you talk about changes to the whole design and how they will make it easier for inexperienced paddlers. How do you know that these specific uh, hole geometries will um, have the effects that you are wanting? So all the uh, differences in the hole geometry and the effects they have, uh, we learn from online research and through experience through testing of other years canoes. In your report, you mentioned uh, the reuse of leftover materials from previous years. Do you have any other sustainable factors um, implemented into this canoe? Uh, we would be reusing the fog tent as well. Um, and reusing a lot of resources, but uh, several materials that we use for the mix as well are uh, uh, continual, like we have them. Also, for the mold, we will be constructing it out of wood instead of foam, as in the past years. And wood is a much more sustainable material. What is the difference between quality assurance and quality control? So quality assurance is the processes and the how of how quality is ensured in the, con uh, in the final product. And con uh, quality control is a subset of quality assurance uh, that involves the testing uh, to uh, ensure quality in the final product. Um, in your detailed fee estimate, you have uh, a single labor cost uh, rate for a lot of these different um, areas of the report and uh, other 
aspects of building the canoe. Is there a reason why you chose to have just a single raw labor weight or were you going to distribute some of these hours across other types of um, laborers such as uh, principal engineers or EITs, et cetera? Uh, we think that our current um, like captain and then lead system and then non-lead system uh, lends itself to the analysis that we provided. How did you, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. How did you determine the unit price for your uh, materials? Uh, so for, it comes in several parts. The, with the mold construction, it comes in calculating the cost of wood and comparing it to last year's mold. I know the wood prices are kind of all over the place right now because of COVID, but we took a, an assumption with that. Uh, and then with the uh, concrete price uh, or the canoe price, we came up with the volume of the canoe and compared it to our assumed cost of uh, volume of the canoe, like in concrete. Can you explain to me how a high range water reducer works and what benefits it has for your concrete? I might be able to answer this one. So the high range uh, water reducer contains uh, polycarboxylates. So this allows it to make use of uh, steric disposition, but we believe that Let's see, not only polar chains similar to water to regular water reducer mixtures, but essentially the main point of HRWR was just to make sure that we have the necessary uh, workability that is coral that corresponds to self-consolidating concrete while also not having an absurdly high uh, WC ratio. So we just wanted to not compromise strength for uh, workability. What is the water dissimitious canoe? Uh, we positioned it at around 0.35. We usually, based on last year's experiences, we didn't want to tend to stray away from anything more than 0.3 or 0.4. So we wanted to stay within that range. So I decided to use uh, an average value of 0.35. What are three things you hope to pass along to uh, the next year's team with the information you've gathered from all this? So um, like we said, both of our enhanced focus areas are focusing on improving the team in general. So creating a uh, small scale model to help communicate ideas effectively. We believe that's something that we should definitely be using. The same with uh, keeping the same spirit of uh, emphasizing the aesthetics team. Um, is very important to us. And then, I don't know, Nathan has one. Um, and just keeping up membership retention the whole time. Um, we, we'll, in the past, we were a very strong paddling team and then now we've had a year without doing anything. So we wanna pick that back up and keep that going. Any other questions? Just one more, if I may. Um, so, in your health and safety portion, you kind of describe it's uh, health and safety is the most important aspect of your process. What would you do if somebody did get sick or injured during construction or any part of the uh, canoe competition? Um, well, as far as immediate response, we'd be contacting the appropriate university officials or like uh, 911 or anything like that, depending on the severity of the issue. And then I think long term, we'd be reevaluating, like, how did this problem happen? What what safety precautions would be not take or what can we employ in the future to stop these issues from happening? I think that's it. I'm good. All right, you see, uh, thank you for your time. You may now leave this uh, Zoom call and join the paper deductions call via the schedule. Um, and Jess will talk to you about your deductions there. So thank you. And then Lindsay, that was the last one, so. Thank you. We appreciate it. All of the judges and all of the teams.
don't forget to check the schedule for other events that are currently happening students we've got some really great seminars ongoing concurrent with this and then we have a really cool keynote at noon to talk about the mls stadium here in austin um, so really